Good morning, everyone. As we begin a new day, I wanted to take a moment today to uh, fulfill my promise to you yesterday, where we discussed making a video on one of the most common mistakes that students make when they are applying, when they are first beginning to, and even sometimes at the college level, when they are applying the laws of exponents. Some of them do it either by ignorance because they may not have been exposed to a, uh, these kind of exercises, or in some cases it's because of negligence, um, pedagogical negligence, and their teachers have not clarified it for whatever reason. There's a lot of districts in America where the, uh, the education, the, the teachers are kind of like a revolving door. They come in and out. They have a lot of high turnover. And that, of course, is a disservice to students. So I'm going to put a little problem here on the board and you tell me where, if there is a mistake, you tell me where it is. And then we're going to go into a deeper discussion about uh, when to apply certain laws, right? So if I gave you, let's say, negative two, right? Um, and I told you that negative two was the same thing as negative two to the one exponent. I know some people say that that's a power, by the way. They say negative two to the one power. I don't, I don't like to do that. That is not a power. That is an exponent. You cannot seriously say that one is a power of two, but that's for another discussion. The power, by the way, is the answer you get from the exponential expression. All right, so do we all agree so far? Negative two is the same as negative two to the one. All right, what if I told you that I can write this one as if I gave you a base of negative two and I told you that the exponent instead was two over two? Right, I think you would all agree two over two is one. So this is okay so far, all right? All right, now we're gonna say that I can also write two over two if I have a base of negative two I can rewrite this as, if I want to be cute, two times a half, right? Because two times a half is the same thing as two over two. Is that legitimate? What do you think? All right. Now, from here, I'm going to say that this negative two can be rewritten as well, since we have a negative base here, negative two to the square and I'm gonna raise that to the one half. Right? And if that's the case, well, if we follow the the order here the order of operations, negative two squared is going to give me positive four. So that gives me four to the one half. And four to the one half is the same thing as saying the square root of four, right? You remember from your laws of radicals, when your exponent is two, you can rewrite it as the square root. Uh, when your when your denominator, sorry, when your when the denominator of your exponent is two, okay, and then the square root of four is two. Right. Have a careful look at this. And here's what we did. Right. Take a moment to look at this. If you look at it very carefully, we are now saying that. I started out with negative two and I now got two and we're saying negative two is equal to two. Is that valid? How dare you think that? Is this valid? How can we say negative two equals two? Right, so clearly there's a problem here, isn't it? And I want you to pause the video Write this down, please, in your notes or wherever, and let me know where you see the error. Where do you see the mistake? Take a moment. All 
right? Did you pause the video? So, where is the mistake? Well, you would all agree, right, if we're dealing with the laws of exponents, a to the 1 is the same. I don't want it to be capitalized. A to the 1 is equal to A, right? You would all agree with that. If, if A is an element of the real numbers, right? You would also say that 1 is equal to 2 over 2. These are, this is a true statement, right? So, so far, we have the following. So far, we have negative 2 equals negative 2 to the 1. That's fine. Uh, we also agree that 1 is equal to 2 over 2. So, this is okay. And we also said that 2 over 2 is the same thing as 2 times one half, right? Which is what we got up here. So this is okay. And now we're saying negative two, negative two squared is equal to four. Is that valid? Is that valid? Well, yeah, I mean, no matter where you are in the world, negative 2 times negative 2 is going to give you a positive 4. So where is the mistake? Well, a lot of your instructors have been teaching you. You've been learning this throughout the years. It's, it's one of those things that come like kind of like with um, what they call PEMDAS in some bad schools. And uh, we have a... There's a rule of exponents that say a to the m, this is called the power rule, that when you have something like this, right, uh, an exponent inside a parentheses and an exponent outside a parentheses, you have to distribute the exponents and this becomes rewritten as a to the m times n, right? But like so many of the mathematical laws, this comes with a terms of service. And this is what has been upsetting me for a very long time because a lot of times they don't tell you these things and they don't tell you that what the terms of service are, right? And so if we look at an expression here, right, the a to the m, that is the base. This whole thing here is the base. Um, let me start from the beginning, actually. When you have an, an exponential expression without any parentheses, like let's say you had 2 to the third, the big number here, this number here, is called the base. And this number right here is called the exponent, not the power. Now you see why I, I mentioned that earlier. You cannot seriously say that 3 is a power of 2. The answer that you get from this, the exponent tells you always how many times to multiply the base by itself. So this would be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 2, which of course gives you 8. Now we have the power. 8 is a, indeed a power of 2. Right? So that's why I rather read this as 2 to the third exponents or 2 cubed or 2 raised to the third, etc. But that's another matter. So in the law that I wrote here, and that you should all be familiar with, this a to the m, a to the m, since it's inside a parentheses, is the base of n, right? That is the base of n because it's a, an exponent raised to another exponent, okay? And of course, a is a by itself is the base of m, right? But if, this is very important, please write this down. If A is negative, actually, let me put this in big, big letters. If A is negative, neither M nor N can be rational with an even 
denominator. In other words, if the index of your root is an even number, you do not have negatives. Right? Have they ever clarified this in your school? Have your teachers made this very clear? If A is negative, right, if the base is negative, neither M nor N can be rational with an even denominator. I get very, very, very upset when this is not clarified. Why do I get upset, by the way? Is it just because I like getting upset? No, it's because it leads to students failing. It leads to students making mistakes, the same ones, and they feel, and, and it accumulates, and then it's overwhelming, and then you feel discouraged. If they've never clarified this for you, they've done you a disservice. You've been lied to. And this is, a, this is actually a mathematical fact, right? Now, let's go back to our original problem then and see where we can detect the mistake. Right. Well, let's focus in on this right here. This right here. Do we all see that? We have a negative base, which of course, negative two squared inside the brackets. If we were to use the laws of math, we know that when you have an even exponent, you can rewrite this as with the root symbol. It is a square root, the inverse. So this would be like writing it this way, square root of negative two. And what did we say in the, pre, in the other video where we talked about never doing certain things with roots? Don't you ever tell me or anyone else that there is such a thing in the set of real numbers as a negative root. How could you say that, right? There, is no, there are no two numbers that when you multiply them, you're going to get a negative number back. If you multiply a positive by a negative, you get a negative. If you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. How can you get the square root of negative two outside the uh, field, the set of imaginary complex numbers? You cannot. No, but I can, but, but mister, I can uh, cancel this and that. No, no, no. You, you cannot, it does not exist in the set of real numbers. So the mistake was to assume that I could just raise this at my whim. You cannot just play around like that. You have to look at the set of numbers uh, that you are working with. So next time, now you can have this in your notes. Next time this comes up, you can bring it up and uh, just be very careful with those sorts of operations. This becomes very important when you're doing things like uh, when you're dealing with power rules, like derivatives and um, all of that. And no, it has nothing to do with the order Some, someone mentioned. Um, and by the way, I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate one of the comments someone wrote about it was because of the order of operations. No, it has nothing to do with the order of operations. It has to do with what set of numbers we are working with. So if this was helpful to you, please let me know in the comments down below. By the way, we now have almost, I am so blessed to say, almost eight hundred subscribers. Can you believe that? We started this channel uh, a little over a month ago, and I had no intention of ever reviving this channel. And one of the reasons was because I'm just not a tech person. I'm, I'm one of those people who um, I'm happy with uh, paper, pe pen and paper. But then I noticed that a lot of students need mathematical clarification. And I thought to myself, you know, it would have been wonderful if I would have had similar opportunities when I was uh, struggling in math. So I figured um, if I could use some of my time to share these things with you, um, and if it's helpful to students, then I'm all the happier for it. So please continue to assist me as the channel grows. I know we're going to grow. I have really good feelings about this channel. Everything uh, that we've been seeing in the past month, we're getting audiences from all over the world, United States, United Kingdom, Germany, I've had people from the Philippines watching these videos. I've had people from India watching the videos. Um, 
Some people are writing to me from Japan even. Um, so we are on the move. And I want you to know that this channel is here for you for all your mathematical needs. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing other videos. Things like uh, I, I, I made a calculus video the other day on the derivative. But I only gave an informal definition of the derivative. So hopefully soon I'll give you the formal definition of the derivative. So if this video was helpful, please subscribe. Please give me a like and help out, help us grow.